I have a very brief one minute story about trading the financial markets and what it takes to truly achieve success in this field. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger is widely considered as one of the most inspirational figures of modern times. He embodies the perfect blueprint for achieving incredible success and with it, huge financial rewards. He rose from humble beginnings to great heights. His story is truly one of absolute rags to riches. Now, anyone aspiring to trade is essentially following a very similar, if not identical path to Arnold's. Think about it. You start with zero knowledge, much like Arnold did when he first had his big dream in the middle of nowhere in Austria. And just like Arnold, your ultimate goal is to succeed, both in terms of knowledge, in your case trading, and financially, just as Arnold did in his chosen endeavours. Given that Arnold's journey is a perfect blueprint for going from zero knowledge to huge success, it makes sense to consider his rules of success as crucial barometers of whether you're also on the right path in your own trading career. Now, Arnold famously had five rules of success, but I want to focus on just one for a few more seconds before we dive into some live trading. Now, this particular rule is, in my opinion, the number one trait needed to be a successful trader. Arnold said that to be successful, and to quote him, you need to work your ass off. There is no magic pill or shortcut. You have to work, work, and work. I want you to remember this because it's essential to ask yourself, is this work? What about this? Is this work? Now, I have absolutely nothing personal against anyone using things like retail trading charts or techniques, I couldn't care less who they are. However, as a professional trader myself, someone that has worked on some of the top trading floors in the world, I can tell you this, it's not work. And in fact, you don't need me to tell you that drawing some lines or zones on a chart that anyone with very little skill could do is clearly not going to lead to the type of success you think it's going to lead to. You'll just end up wasting your time. Not only that, but doing those types of things is clearly the complete opposite of what Arnold is clearly telling us from his first-hand experience that to succeeding anything in life, including trading, you need to work your ass off. There is no magic pill or shortcut. These shortcuts will lead nowhere, and you probably already know this if you are being truly honest with yourself. So the question is, are you ready to work hard, to work and work and work? Put another way, do you really want to succeed in trading? How badly do you want it? If the answer is yes, and you're willing to work for it, then you're in the perfect place because I'm going to show you the type of work successful institutional traders are doing, and unsurprisingly, it doesn't involve any shortcuts. It involves proper work. Anyone can do it, you just have to be willing. I'm more than happy to show you what you need to do, so let's do it together. So in that intro, we spoke about how institutional traders are doing more work. They recognize what Arnold said, which is that to succeed, it requires a lot of hard work. Now, what does that mean, work? In my opinion, that means being inquisitive. You know, not just accepting um, that what in, is in front of you is the answer, because that's what everyone else does, and that's why they don't succeed. It's, it's about looking deeper, right? Which is what, you know, just because it's trading, it doesn't matter. That's why I brought the Arnold example, because he did the same. You know, he realized if he just sat there in the mountains and did what everyone else did, it wasn't going to get him to America. It wasn't going to get him to um, the top of the game, basically. So we'll only spend a few minutes, okay? And you can see something very fascinating here. We're gonna break it down slightly. Um, we won't spend more than a few minutes just because I wanna just highlight this kind of different approach that institutional traders take, not only in terms of work ethic, but also in terms of that curiosity that they have to go deeper, and that's why they're so successful. And I saw that because obviously I was very fortunate to spend many years around some incredible traders. So I'm excited to share some of that with you. We'll only spend about five minutes and it will really whet your appetite and hopefully start pointing you in the right direction, okay? So one of the things we are going to do, 
we will have a look at, as you can probably see here, I've actually taken a trade at this point in time and um, it's a live trade and I will show you, we'll spend no more than a minute, just I will actually show you in real time how that trade was taken and how it played out. But what I want to do is I want to actually take a step back and um, maybe highlight things to you in a slightly different way than what you're used to seeing. So obviously you might just be used to seeing a, and I want you to remember this as we're just breaking this down together, something like that is what you're used to seeing. And you don't, let's say you want to buy the market, right? And I won't discuss in detail today why I wanted to buy the market, but I did want to buy the market. And the point is, how do you really know when to do that? You know, do you do it at this point? Do you do it at this point? You know, how do you know the market won't go further down or further down or further down? How do you know at which point, right, to do that? So this is where it gets very interesting as a professional trader. So just remember this, this is what you're looking at and we can even just very briefly draw that out if I just clean this up. And you know, this is probably more like what you are kind of used to seeing yourself, right? If you were to admit it, you know, yourself is, you've seen a normal retail chart, kind of like what we saw in the intro. And that's why I said that's not really work because, you know, you might end up buying here, but how do you know that it won't then go down further? You know, and then you end up buying here and then it ends up going down further, you know. So can you see this is very similar to what we've got in front of us here, except professional traders realize that it's not good enough. They obviously have this curiosity to want to go a little bit deeper and understand, you know, what sort of behaviors are we seeing inside this movement and how can we use that to really time our entries into the market a lot better so you know it doesn't have to be and i'm just going to widen this out a little bit so we can see a little bit more detail um it doesn't have to be using something like this which is a footprint it's just basically a, a candlestick same as what you're used to seeing um, however obviously it's just got a little bit more information in terms of showing you the intricacies that are going on within it you know there's a reason why on your retail chart this candle goes down like that there's a reason it's not just happening by magic and it's definitely got nothing to do with any trend lines or fibonacci's or whatever it is you're looking at i can promise you that's got nothing to do with it right and, I, and you don't even need to take my word for it you can see why a candle moves down one or indeed may move up one right it's because you've got real people out there like you and i with a lot more money than you and i and you can see and that here, in terms of a number, this is the number of contracts. And, you know, if we were to multiply this by the value of a contract, you'd soon realize that each of these positions are very, very large, you know, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So there's real people, real people out there who have sold the market and that's pushing the market down. That is why on your chart you see it moving down, right? So... Without this inherent curiosity that professional traders have, you as a individual, perhaps retail trader, you know, think about it, what hope have you got? You haven't, you're really just, you might as well roll a dice, right? And I'm not very good at rolling dice, but, uh, sorry, at drawing dice, but, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. You might as well just roll the dice, right? So what I'm trying to say to you is you don't need to do that. Have this curiosity, do what Arnold did and start to, um, question what's in front of you and say, you know what, that's not good enough. That's really not good enough. I need to really understand at a deeper level, like professional traders are doing, what's actually going on here so I can understand when this might turn around, right? Otherwise, what's the point of trading? You might as well go to the casino instead, right? So obviously you're here to develop something that's going to yield some consistent results for you. To do that, as I said, you've got to do some work. So. What we'll do, we'll have a look at a really basic um, analysis together. It'll take a, no more than a couple of minutes. We're just gonna dig deeper into this candle right at the bottom. And I wanna show you why um, at the bottom, I've got some statistics here at the bottom, um, which anyone can have access to. It's very, very simple. And I'm gonna show you that I can even replicate what is here on my Excel spreadsheet Right, it's very, very straightforward. We're gonna do it together. 
I just want to show you, you don't really need to, um, you know, just blindly take what is being shown to you. You should really be looking at stuff that you can easily kind of replicate yourself um, to prove to yourself that it makes sense. Okay, and that's, that's another kind of part of being inquisitive. It's not only digging deeper, but it's once you've dug deeper and you see things, question those things, right? Don't even take my word for it. Have a look. I, for yourself, does it make sense? So I'm going to show you it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we can see the number of sellers here in this column and the number of buyers. I just quickly did this myself earlier just to save time. So you can see here it says 0, 303, 409, 449. So I haven't made these numbers up. I've literally just copied them across. It's showing us the number of contracts that are being sold. So real people are selling. That's why it's pushing the price down. Now on the other side, there's obviously people buying. Right, so you've got people buying on this side, and I've also put that into this column. So zero, one, seven, one, right? You can see it here, zero, one, seven, one, and so on and so forth. Now we'll do this together. That's why I say you should have this curiosity to do this and the desire to work to do this. Let's look at the difference between the buyers and the sellers. Very simple concept. The difference between the buyers and the sellers. If there's more buyers, what's going to happen? The market's going to go up. If there's more sellers, the market's um, typically going to go down, right? So we can do the buyers minus the sellers. So 131 contracts bought uh, and zero contracts sold. What's the difference? 131. That's why you can see here it's actually been plotted for us, 131. Okay. Now, if we just copy that down, I've literally just copied it down, we can now see some of these numbers match exactly what I've got here. So at the bottom, I've got minus 170. Can you see I've got minus 170? So more sellers than buyers. Now, if we sum that up, take the total, right? So really simple, equals sum, and then we just sum the total up. What have we got? Minus 3,169 more contracts were sold than were bought. And can you see down here, minus 3,169. Okay, so these aren't random numbers. These are calculated very specifically to tell us crucial information that at this point, the selling is very, very heavy. And we can also see that here, minus 2,205, minus 1,000. Why do you think on your chart, the market is moving down like that? It's because there are more sellers than buyers. Now, what we want to do, so we've proven that to ourselves, right? And it makes a lot of sense. We're not just relying on software. We've also calculated it for ourselves. Okay, so we're now getting into the realm of what professional traders will be doing. Obviously, they won't calculate it for every candle, otherwise they'd be there all day. I'm just saying that they're satisfied that what the software is telling them is makes sense, is a crucial piece of information, and it's gonna help them make money. That, that's why we're here, right? So if we now squeeze out a little bit again, right, and we look at the actual trade I took, which was there, okay, what professional traders are trying to do, right, and it's not intentional, a lot of people get paranoid about this, is as the market's pushing down, they want sellers to be strong, because if that was to reverse, think about it, if that was you, right, and you've sold the bottom of the market, and then the market starts to move against you, you can see here a lot of buying coming in, Right, and you're, you're also looking at this, you can see that the market is turning around. What you're going to do, you're going to get out of the position, is you're gonna force the market up. So professional traders realize this, but they need to know where you are. You know, where have you sold? Well, here's your answer. You can see that a lot of that selling has taken place in these areas. So that gives us a big clue, you know, that if we do start to turn around here, it's likely to be a very potentially profitable endeavor for us to buy the market and also helps with risk management because we know that if the market then turns around again sellers are back in control okay so don't want to go much deeper than that just wanted to highlight to you the kind of work not only work ethic but it's more that inquisitiveness it's that real interest in what's actually going on in front of me which admit it to yourself you know most retail traders and even new institutional traders probably don't have that real desire to go deeper the way Arnold did himself. So it's really not going to get you where you want to be, is it? So if you really want to succeed in this game, 
these are the types of things you need to be doing okay now what we're going to do just to wrap it up nicely and then we're done is we're going to have a look at um, the exact same example let me just clear this up a little bit um, over here you can see it's exactly the same that I'm, I'm going to show you i took it in real time the way i entered and then the exit and that'll be a nice way just to reinforce for you that um, this is actually what professional traders are doing and it's what you should be doing. So let me just adjust myself onto the screen. I'll see you in two seconds. Okay, perfect. So I've just adjusted myself onto the screen. So obviously I'm not blocking out too much of your vision. You can see it's exactly the same scenario, minus 3,169, lot of selling going on. Um, so as we said, if we go above here, um, the market's likely to um, reverse if a lot of these sellers start to get nervous, which that's why you can see I've just entered the trade there above the exact area which I mentioned to you where um, this kind of phenomenon was happening. You can see it's exactly the same as what we just discussed together, except you can see now that I'm actually executing on it. I mean, it's on my live account that you can see there in the top um, left corner. I've just entered the market. First target is slightly higher. You can see exactly where my stop is over here as well. Um, and these things can take a little bit of time. You know, it can take sometimes 20 to 60 minutes just for the order flow to kind of clean itself up. When I say clean itself up, I mean for these sellers, for it to really dawn on them that, okay, they're in trouble. So, you know, the initial um, sellers that are, I wouldn't say smarter, but, you know, maybe a little bit more jumpy about the fact that it's moved against them, they'll already be out. But there'll obviously be a few more that are still just kind of, you know how it is, you've been in that scenario where you're just hoping, you're hoping things turn around, but obviously that's not a good situation to be in, right? Eventually they'll give up as well and that can cause that jump that we need to take us to our target. So sometimes it can take time. You'll see this example, which I'm going to fast forward now, um, just because obviously I've made my point in the video. Um, if we fast forward it, you'll see it took about 20 minutes, but you can see how that within about, 15 to 20 minutes, the jump really starts to happen and we start to see the market uh, motor ahead. So in the end, um, fairly comfortable trade, $2,375 um, with not much drawdown, right? You can see how that market just reversed and the point was about the timing and having the right work ethic, number one, but number two, inquisitiveness to get us this end result. And you can see how different it is to how you might be approaching um, traditionally your charts. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a brilliant, fascinating insight into how professional traders work. Um, check out this video if you're truly interested in developing a consistent career with these sort of results. See you next time.